On the morning of October 13th, a certain Prince Harry and his narcissistic wife Meghan Markle took a walk through the Sandy Lane Yacht Club Resort on Catawin Island. Now that's a small 3.2 mile islet in the Caribbean, and it's famous for its white sandy beaches and its luxurious accommodations. Supposedly, the two of them were spotted by a passerby as they were leaving a gourmet food store, but in spite of their beautiful surroundings, their body language appeared tense as they made a clumsy attempt to hold hands during the walk. According to a source, the getaway was a make-or-break trip for Harry and Meghan, who still haven't found their footing in the U.S. since they left their royal duties in Harry's native England in 2020. The source told Star Magazine that Meghan particularly is stressed over their failed business dealings and financial worries, and it's causing a lot of friction at home. The source says the tension has been building. On the surface, Meghan and Harry seem to have it all. Their Montecito mansion to beautiful children and well-connected friends. But they're realizing it's not enough, and Meghan feels like she's pulling all the weight. The former Suits actress had some big dreams when she and Harry moved to California. Now, in the beginning, they were wooed by popular streaming services, and they were signing some lucrative deals with Netflix and Spotify, and let's not forget Harry's book deal with Penguin Random House. The source says Meghan and Harry thought things would keep going in that profitable direction indefinitely, but in June, the same month it was confirmed that Meghan's podcast series, Archetypes, wasn't going to be renewed for a second season, their partnership with Spotify all of a sudden came to an end. And publicly, they were crucified. Right after the Spotify announcement was made, United Talent Agency CEO Jeremy Zimmer called Megan not a great audio talent, or necessarily any kind of talent, and a Spotify executive referred to the two of them as grifters. Then in May, people made fun of them for claiming they had been involved in a near-catastrophic car chase with the paparazzi for more than two hours after an event where Megan picked up a bot award in New York City. Between the lost deals and all the media scrutiny, it's been an uphill battle for Meghan and Harry, says the source. And according to the source, Meghan is blaming Harry for their situation. It has occurred to her that his work experience was mostly limited to shaking hands at royal events. Harry never had a real career other than his royal duties, and his time in the armed forces, says the source. While Megan was used to working 14-hour days, six days a week on her TV series, Harry's job was to show up, smile at people, and make small talk. As a result, it's had to be Megan who is the driving force behind their brand. Megan's the one working with agents and managers and studios because she knows how deals are made, according to this source. Harry supposedly has learned a lot from Megan, but, quote, he still doesn't totally get it. And apparently, according to the source, watching her husband fail has been really difficult for Megan. Harry's just not a take-charge kind of person. As a royal and a military man, he followed orders, according to this source. He still has people to do footwork for him. The real decision-making is done by Megan. And apparently, it is not the fairy tale that Megan thought it would be when they got married back in 2018. The source added, marrying a prince should be a dream come true. Megan expected to be adored by all, but the reality of her situation has not been all pleasant. <laughs> she's, I'm sorry, I just can't even read this stuff seriously. So she's taken the brunt of the negative publicity, which bothers her. Little girls may look up to her as a real live princess, but no one else seems to. <laughs> Oh my god, these puff pieces are just getting more and more absurd by the day. Who is looking up to Meghan Markle? I don't believe any little girls are. I mean, she looks like a Halloween skeleton that got a makeover at Merle Norman by a blind person. Who's gonna look up to that? Okay, alright, I gotta get it together and continue. Okay, so according to this article, together they have become more guarded, mostly socializing with a small circle of A-list friends and local parents. Okay... Harry and Meghan definitely wonder who their real friends are, who will respect their privacy, and who will gossip about them. They can't totally be themselves except when they're alone, according to this source. The parents of invisible children, Archie and Lilibet, were hoping to be able to reconnect after some one-on-one -on -one time in the Caribbean. The source reports they desperately needed this break from their responsibilities, the kids' schedules, and everything else going on in their lives. The source went on to say, though, of course, it didn't solve all their problems, adding that money problems are weighing on them heavily. 
there's a very real threat that they could be facing a financial nightmare unless things start to change very soon, according to this source. But don't worry, because they're not giving up just yet. The source claims that Megan and Harry didn't take kindly to being labeled grifters back in June. <laughs> After that accusation, they held their heads high and will continue to do so. For them, says the source, it's always a matter of quality over quantity. They feel they've put their heart and souls into their projects and have been working hard, and they're not going to let some executive burst their bubble. They're too good for that. Are you all thinking what I'm thinking? That source is absolutely Meghan Markle herself. I mean, who else would come up with such a steaming pile of BS? In the beginning, people in the UK were drawn into that relationship. People saw it as good news. At the time, most people liked Harry. We thought he was the fun prince. But everything changed once Meghan decided that she had made it and her horrible self came out. And that created this whole toxic atmosphere that now she's having to deal with. Unfortunately, she thought that she was going to be able to modernize the monarchy to what she thought it should be. She just wanted to ignore the hierarchy of the working royals, and she thought that she should be number one. She told Princess Anne, we are all equal in the monarchy, or something to that effect. She didn't know what she was talking about, but that didn't stop her from saying it. And Princess Anne informed her, oh no, we absolutely aren't. Princess Anne was not going to put up with Meghan's BS. She does not suffer fools gladly. She saw through Meghan from the very start. I think Princess Anne had to bite her tongue on more than one occasion to not give her the response she wanted to give her. I have noticed, too, that Meghan never goes after Princess Anne personally. She knows that Princess Anne would rip her to shreds. Let's be honest here. Meghan Markle never intended on staying as a member of the royal family. She was already in contact with Netflix before she even married Harry. And that's why she invited all the celebrities, people she didn't even know, people she had never met. The stars even said they had never met her, but they went because they were not going to miss a royal wedding. Meghan immediately started trying to grift the stars, believing they owed her for being invited to that stupid wedding. She also tried to patent the Sussex royal brand to start merching just before the Sandringham Summit. Well, the late queen found out what she was up to and told them no, they absolutely could not use royal to merchandise. And they also removed the HRH or told them they weren't allowed to use it. And that's also when they stopped using that Sussex royal Instagram account. Back then, Meghan's biggest supporter was certainly Harry. He still thought everything was going to be so great and wonderful in America. Harry was still head over heels thanks to all the love bombing, and Meghan had convinced him that they were going to be so successful in California. Harry really should have listened to his grandfather's advice, though. You date an actress. You don't marry one. And I do wonder, what was Meghan planning on doing to modernize the monarchy exactly? I guess make herself front and center, but other than that, I have no idea. Would she make Harry the king, or would it just be Queen Meghan all the way? Or maybe she would have tried to make it into a dictatorship. I could have seen that too. And you, do you agree with me? Please continue to discuss Meghan and Harry with us below in the comments. Don't be afraid to like and share this video with anybody else who would enjoy it anytime you want. And please subscribe to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in, goodbye, and I'll be back to see you tomorrow.